Hello all. In the next few tutorials, we'll be discussing about something called partial reconfiguration. So this is a very interesting topic and I guess it will be gaining more traction in the coming years, uh, mainly because of uh, using FPGAs in the cloud. You might have heard about this term, uh, otherwise you can go ahead and check. So uh, this technique is supported by both Xilinx as well as in Intel now, uh, but we'll be using Vivado to do it. So in this tutorial, I'll be giving the basic background about what is partial reconfiguration and uh, some of the terminologies that we are going to use. Because if you look at the user guide, uh, there will be so many terms which might be con confusing, but uh, we don't need to understand all the terms. Some of them are good enough. So which are the important terms I, I'll be discussing in this tutorial and in the next tutorial we will be uh, actually doing a practical example yeah so uh, this is the main motivation for partial reconfiguration so suppose you have a system and uh, you don't want to use all the modules in the system always that means some of the modules they are mutually exclusive so as shown in the picture i have a processing chain so i have modules a b c d e f but uh, a and B, they are mutually exclusive. C and D, they are mutually exclusive. E and F, they are mutually exclusive. So whenever I do processing, I will use either B, C, E, or I'll be using A, D, F, okay? Now the traditional way of implementing this circuit will be something like this. So you will insert multiplexers in, uh, in between these modules and you will choose whichever module you need based on this uh, multiplexer control okay so this is what we call as a spatial multiplexing approach now partial reconfiguration it provides an alternative for this where we are going to use uh, temporal multiplexing instead of spatial multiplexing okay so here the idea is you will be modifying only part of the fpga instead of reconfiguring the entire fpga fabric so uh, that is the definition for partial reconfiguration so selectively modifying portion of the fpga uh, instead of reconfiguring the entire fpga now uh, when you are modifying some part of the fpga the remaining part it will be still operational okay it will continue to work uh, while the reconfiguration operation is in progress in traditional reconfiguration that is not the case you cannot use the fpga while it is going uh, reconfiguration process so there are a lot of advantages so first one is you can increase the effective logic capacity of the FPGA because you are doing uh, temporal multiplexing. For example, here you can see I have designated some area of the FPGA here, which I'll be doing partial reconfiguration. Uh, I'll be doing runtime reconfiguration. The term partial reconfiguration and runtime reconfiguration, they are interchangeably used nowadays, although it can be different depending upon the scenario part will be using both terms interchangeably so i have designated some area here and i'm saying like the logic in this part uh, can be reconfigured at runtime so what i can do is okay at time t1 i can put hardware one module there and later at time t2 i can put hardware two there okay so i have same region but i'm using different modules at different times. That's what we call as a temporal multiplexing. So this will increase the effective logic capacity because now you don't need hardware one and hardware two sitting concurrently, uh, which will need more FPGA area. Okay? So here also in the previous example, you can uh, do a temporal multiplexing and you can implement either A or B at a given point in time at some given portion in the FPGA. This will also help in reducing power consumption because you are reducing the area which will directly uh, result in reduction in power consumption and this will also reduce system cost because now you need a smaller fpga to implement a larger fpga because you are doing this temporal multiplexing and uh, this is one of the major advantage which is going to come virtualization of fpga that means one fpga chip can be shared among multiple users uh, by designating different regions on the FPGA and uh, different people can use different region without disturbing the other region because as I mentioned before in partial reconfiguration while you reconfigure one region it will not affect the remaining portion of the chip.
okay now these are some of the terminologies that you will come across now silings they have their own terminologies intel they have their own terminologies okay so i, I have also added some of my terminologies for easier understanding so only these many terms we need to remember okay so first term is called a prr or partially reconfigurable region okay so this is your entire fpga chip entire fpga fabric and you logically partition it into many regions okay there is no physical partitioning you are just logically dividing it into many parts so the portion of the fpga which will never be reconfigured at runtime which will never go under partial reconfiguration that portion we call as the static region okay so there will be only one static region its shape can be water shape now the region of the fpga which are designated uh, to be reconfigured during runtime those regions are called pr or partially reconfigurable region okay so here we have two regions region one and region two and these portions can be reconfigured during runtime now a reconfigurable module is a module uh, which will be implemented in this partially reconfigurable regions okay now modes this term actually is my term so a mode is a mutually exclusive implementation of a module so for example here look at this region one okay now i'm going to implement a module called b in this region but b will have different flavors okay so uh, when we take an example it will be clear to you uh, for example if i am doing a modulation so i will call my reconfigurable module as a modulator but i can do different kind of modulation i can use uh, qpsk i can use fsk i can use bpsk different kind of modulation but all of them are called the modulator module okay now different implementation of that same module psk fsk qpsk i'm going to call them as different modes of that module okay. so b is my module here but b can have different mode but at a given point in time only one mode of b will be running at this region that means all these modes they are mutually exclusive so same way here i have a module a which has two modes but either mode one or mode two one of them will be present at a given point in time now configuration again this is a science term so it is a set of coexistent modes that make up a functional processing chain so as i mentioned before only one of the modes exists here and one of the modes exists here now uh, the combination of the modes that exist that we call as a configuration for example b mode one a mode one together with the static region that will make one configuration or b mode 2 a mode 2 along its static region it will make another configuration so and so forth so if you if you look at these modes the total number of possible configuration is the cartesian product of number of modes that exists in each region so in this case i will have three cases here i will have two cases here total i can have three times two six different configuration but practically maybe all those configurations are not valid you won't be using all of them for processing but theoretically six are possible but uh, the useful ones can be less than that okay so it's possible like b mode 2 and a mode 1 they together make no sense for you okay so that's possible now uh, this okay i'm going to discuss the fpg architecture so this i have already covered in my uh, first tutorial lecture only few additional thing i'm going to cover here a few more terminologies so as you know uh, silings fpgs they are divided into rows and columns intel fpgs they are also divided into rows and columns so the division into rows that is based on something called a clock region so inside fpga there will be special routing for clocks and we have so called uh, regional clock routing okay so there is a global uh, wires carrying the clock signal then there are uh, local uh, network for distributing this clock region so each row is actually representing one clock region 
all the elements in that region uh, are managed by one clock tree okay so that's how we have different rows similarly we have different columns okay columns as you know they are divided based on the type of resource so you can have a column of clb you can have a column of dsp you can have a column of brap these are the three kind of columns currently available in Xilinx. now uh, the new term coming here for partial reconfiguration is called a frame okay because a frame is always one bit wide and it extends one column and the height will be only one row so what i mean is look at this one here so this is a frame and this is only one bit wide and its height will be always one row one row and this frame is used for uh, configuring a particular kind of resource for example this frame is used for configuring clbs but using one frame you cannot configure all the clbs in this column because it's only one bit wide so how many frames you will need to configure one entire uh, column of clb depends upon which family of fpga you are using Okay. Now, the thing is, uh, the smallest unit for partial reconfiguration is always called, I am calling it a tile. Again, this is my terminology. So, a tile is a column of a particular kind of resource, which is only one row high. Okay. So, here, this entire thing, we will call it as a CLB column, but a column which is only one clock region high, one row high. That means from here to here that's what we are going to call a tile so when you define this region when you partition fpga into your partially reconfigurable regions okay it should be an integer multiple of these these tiles so even if you define like i i need only these many resources for my my module vivado is always going to use this entire row for implementing uh, that logic because that's how the internal architecture is because this frame the smallest unit you cannot subdivide it is always one row high so your region should be always an integer multiple of columns and they should be continuous also when you define a region so i can say like my region is from here to here this entire thing it should be continuous but in the tool there will be option like you can exclude uh, dsps and bram coming in between if you wish to but you cannot use them to implement any other logic so practically there is no advantage in excluding them okay so yeah so that's the thing again these terms are not important only thing to remember is when you go to vivado when we define these regions we will always define them in a uh, number of columns and the height of that region will be always uh, integer multiples of these rows we will not define like one and a half row things like that that's not uh, supported now another term that you will come across when we again uh, do pr in vivado is called for planning so as i mentioned before we need to uh, logically divide our fpga into partially reconfigurable region and you need to tell Vivado where in the FPGA fabric this region should be implemented. That's what we call as floor planning. Now, when again, when we are doing a small example, uh, it doesn't matter how you do it. But uh, if you are aiming for high performance, you will have to do it in such a way that when you define the region, you should try to increase the density, you should try to improve the rootability, and you should try to improve the performance because where you put this region will ultimately decide what will be the clock performance of your system more details again these are more or less research topics you can read research papers if you are interested but we will be doing some practical example okay so again as i mentioned what all things we should consider when we do floor planning so one uh, mandatory condition in vivado is the regions that you decide, define, they should be always rectangular in shape and their height should be 
always in number of device row which i already mentioned so when you do partial reconfiguration we will always reconfigure one entire region even if uh, there is minor change in the module which is implemented within the region it is not possible to change only that part at least in the flow that we are following there is a different flow where you may be able to do it but in the flow that we are following you can always modify only one entire region so that's why we need to try to keep the size of the region as small as possible as compact as possible at the same time the region should be big enough to implement the module uh, in that region okay so if your module resource requirement is 100 clb your region should have more than 100 clb otherwise that module cannot be implemented there and again as the size of the region increases the size of the bit stream okay so that's another thing that we are going to see so vivado he will give you a so-called full bit stream which we have been using all this time he will also give you something called partial bit stream because runtime you need to change only one part of the fpga one portion of the fpga for example here you want to change only this part so vivado will give you so-called partial bit stream which can be used for changing only this region without affecting any other region so that size of that bit stream is also proportional to the size of the area it is not like uh, constant for a given fpg so again that's why we need to keep the size of the region smaller so again this is a practical example the one i mentioned before this is a processing uh, chain for an ofdm transmitter so you can have different modules here we have modulator pilot insertion preamble insertion and iffd but uh, i can have different kind of modulators qpsk qam uh, QAM 1664 I have different kind of pilots I can have different kind of preamble I can use different IFFT and each valid combination of them is representing a configuration this is the one I mentioned before so I have three kind of modulation I have three kind of pilot I have three kind of preamble I have three kind of IFFT so theoretically there should be three times three times three times three those many configuration theoretically but practically not all combinations of uh, pilot and preamble works together so we need to choose them only the valid one so when i do like that uh, only there are nine valid configuration okay so this is one configuration this is one configuration so on and so forth and we are calling it by some name again interested people you can read this paper and uh, you will find like how it is done okay so now some of the practical things so how we are going to do it in vivado now one thing to remember uh, if you are using vivado web edition it will not support partial reconfiguration it is uh, licensed separately so if you are using web edition by default mm -hmm. pr will not work you may have to buy a separate license you can try xilinx uh, university program they might be giving it for free if you are a student now if you are using system edition vivado uh, the license comes with vivado you don't have to install any separate license okay so when we do uh, pr design uh, again we will see it is not entirely supported in gui you have to do part of it in gui and part of it in tickle or you can completely do it using tickle script We'll be using part of it in GUI and part of it in Tickle so that things are much clearer until you become experts on it. Okay. So first thing that we are going to do is we will have to generate the netlist for the static region and the reconfigurable modules. That is the first thing we are going to do. And the netlist, uh, they are called uh, DCP files in Vivado, design checkpoints. So we will create the netlist for the static region that means the region which is not going to change and the netlist for the reconfigured module which will change during runtime and we will save all this netlist after that we will have to do the flow planning you have to tell vivado uh, where are these reconfigurable region within the fpg fabric so that we have to tell later you have to combine the netlist of the static region and the netlist of the reconfigurable modules together uh, 
to generate valid configuration okay so only for the valid combination we combine the netlist then we will place and root the netlist after place and root we will save the placed and routed netlist separately and from that place and routed netlist you will remove the reconfigurable part and again save the netlist why that is important again i will explain you when we uh, do it in practice then uh, we will combine the other reconfigurable module because you already took some modules you created one configuration okay you are done with that configuration so you will remove the modules the mode the one we used and you add a new mode and you will again generate a new netlist and finally you will generate the full and partial bitstream for all the valid configurations so these are the steps we are going to use so this slide i will be referring back in the next tutorial okay so even if you don't understand anything here that's perfectly fine because this will be used as a reference when i do it in vivado so that you can cross refer here now uh, one important thing that you will come across when we again do it in vivado is called out of context synthesis this term you might have seen whenever we do block design uh, Vivado will be showing like launching out of context synthesis. Okay, now why out of synthesis uh, context synthesis is important here also. So it's important because uh, when Vivado does synthesis in normal flow, he will always add input and output buffers to the input and output port so when you declare a module you will have input output uh, interface so vivado by default he will always add input buffer to all input signals and output buffer to all output signals why buffers are important i think in the first tutorial i have explained now the problem is uh, when you uh, synthesis some of the modules separately and later you combine this netlist to build your entire system this will be problematic okay so let me take an example and try to show it to you so i have two modules here i have module a i have module b and my plan is to do partial reconfiguration okay so first thing what i will do is this is representing my static region this region is not going to change during runtime or this module is not going to change during runtime but this module uh, i am planning to change during runtime so the first step in vivado is to synthesize the netlist for this region or this module and this module separately so when i do it in traditional flow what vivado does is he will add buffers to all the inputs here all the output here as well as he will add buffer to all the input and output here okay so these are two separate synthesis process i am running them separately so in your block design also you might have noticed he will say like out of context he is running for each ip core separately same thing is happening there also so i uh, generated the netlist separately after that i will have to combine them together before placement and routing okay so when i do it this is what is going to happen i will try to combine the netlist the problem is you cannot have this input output buffers for a module which is used within another module because physically these buffers they are sitting next to fpga pins so for the topmost module that perfectly makes sense because the input output they are connected to external world they will be coming through pin so they can come through the buffer no issues but this module which is instantiated within the module a within the static module these buffers are not possible because inside the chip physically they do not exist between these uh, routing wires within the chip so you need to tell vivado that when he is synthesizing he should not insert buffers okay so that is what we call as out of context so if you tell vivado i want to synthesize a particular module in out of context mode he will synthesize it he will generate the netlist he will generate the dcp file but he will not insert the input output buffer so that later you can stitch these two netlists together 
and you can build a single netlist and this can be actually implemented okay so that's all in this uh, introduction so next tutorial we will be doing a practical case we will be doing uh, the same image processing example uh, to demonstrate how to do partial reconfiguration thank you